Hey, what's up everyone? Danny and Alex. It's your first class in Jiu Jitsu. So today we're going to try to cover a couple of basic things that you should understand how to do and the difference between certain positions in the game. So check it out. All right, so here I am in Alex's closed guard. Every time you're on the bottom and your legs are wrapped around your opponent's waist, that is called the closed guard position, all right? So there's no points for this. There's nothing advantageous for me, even though I seem to be in control right now. The only goal that I should have here is passing my opponent's legs, all right? So if you're doing jiu-jitsu, the immediate thing here is to be able to uncross the legs and get past the legs, all right? That's called passing the guard. So there's a couple of things I want you guys to remember is number one, don't stay here like this, all right? Of course, if I post my hands on the mat, he's gonna attack those arms, right? You can go for a Kimura, for example, you can go for a guillotine, some collar chokes are available to him. He's grabbing that, breaking the posture, choking me out, all right? So I wanna be able to control. So sometimes if you don't know what to do, worst case scenario, hold the arm like this a little bit, all right? So gain some posture here, then go back to a grip, maybe hold the gi into the shoulder, and then grab here for the waist, control here. There's many ways of posturing, but the idea is understand that every time I'm in this position, my goal is to prevent him from attacking me with submission techniques, but also to get a good posture so that way they can break open the guard. Now, let's go quickly over some of the positions. For example, without going into details of guard passing, once I was able to clear the guard, and if I passed through his legs and I got to the side as such, now this is referred to as passing the guard. So basically, I pass the line of his hips, pass through the legs. That's the guard pass. And for this in Jiu Jitsu, you're going to receive three points for the guard pass. Now, from the side control position, let's switch, let's switch and have Alex get on top here <clears throat> as I explain through the positions. Once Alex passed the guard from here, now he's in good control. Now he has better control here. Now he could switch the submission techniques, right? From here, we can go from knee on belly, boom, and then attack maybe a baseball choke, for example, whatever it is out right he would win the match from there maybe go for the arm lock on this side boom you know there's so many techniques we can do from the side control which we couldn't do when we're positioned between the opponent's legs right you can also get more points by switching to the mount for example once he's here into the mount position now he has chokes once again just like in the guard you know he can choke me out from here he can attack arm locks from there and so on and so forth. There's a lot of techniques we can do from the mount position, but understand one thing. I want you to understand the difference between being on top in the guard versus being on top over the opponent's legs, which is referred to as the mount position, all right? Now, from here, if you dismounted, meaning that you went back to side control, there's zero points, right? Don't think that you're accumulating points. Right now, there's zero points. There's zero points for the side control. There's only points for passing the guard. All right, passing the guard will bring you into the side control position. But from here, if you went to a knee on belly position, now you would get two points, right? You're accumulating your points. And back to the mount, you're back again into another four points, for example, if you got to here. Now let's say, for example, I turned around and he goes for the back control from here, right? He takes the back and now he rocks me to here. And now he has two hooks. If you notice here, there are two hooks around my laps. All right, this is called the back control position, right? The seat belt doesn't give you any points, but this does. If he didn't have the arm control right here, but he did have this, he's gonna get four points, right? This is called the back position. Back control position gives you four points. Now the seat belt is a must in the back control simply because although it doesn't give you any points, for example, if he didn't have the hooks, but he had the seat belt position, he gets zero points, but he has a good control because he's always following me to attack the submission holes, right? So something you need to understand is when we do jiu-jitsu, <clears throat> we're trying to improve our positions. So by improving the positions, you're getting more and more points, but the ultimate goal is to finish the match, right? To finish the points, and uh, not the points, but I should say finish the, the fight, and from there get a submission hold. So for example, if I was losing 10-0 against Alex, and there's 30 seconds on the timer left into the round, I'm down 10 points, I'm losing 10-0. Right, and at the last 10 to 15 seconds, I scored a submission hole, such as an arm bar, for example. Well, now I just automatically won the match, which gives me the victory. He has more points, but the points are only there in case there's no submissions 
happening before the end of the round. That's why we want the points. But it also shows dominance of control. You have to understand another thing is maybe it's zero, zero. There's nobody given points because we didn't attain a position. Every time you attain a position, you must hold for three seconds. So if I didn't get that, it's zero, zero, then there's no advantages. Well, then the referee will determine which one was more offensive in trying to get either submission holes or more offensive in trying to gain better positions of jiu-jitsu. And that's going to be the referee's decision or sometimes there's going to be judges at the tables. So from there, the one who's more offensive in attempting positioning is going to win the match, all right? Let's look at more ways you can actually score points, for example. Let's say, for example, he's on the bottom and he was to reverse the position. Okay, so sweeping techniques will give you two points. As an example, he might go for a scissor sweep. Goes for the collar grip, and now he sweeps me, and I end up here. This will give him two points just for sweeping me. Not to be confused with, if I'm in the mount position, and now my hips are over his hips. Now I've scored my four points, I'm dominating the match, but he rolls me, and reverses the position. This is not referred to as a sweep. This is referred to as a reversal. Reversals will improve your position, get you out of inferior positions, but will not give you points. Now his goal is to pass the legs now. That's where he's gonna get his points. So he's to break open the guard and go around the legs through or around them. Now he's gonna score his points like we talked about at the beginning of the video, all right? So this is just a basic concept to teach you guys how do you position yourselves in jiu-jitsu if you're just starting out to understand a little bit of the scoring system? Sometimes I have parents that write to me on the channel or even in person at my academy and they're curious, they just started out, they have the child starting out in jiu-jitsu and they're curious to understand a little bit how it works. You can search online, there's a lot of credible information such as the IBJJF which is one of the top authorities of Brazilian jiu-jitsu and you'll have the whole chart of how everything works but I just wanted to do a very basic overview Teach you guys a little bit how it works. I think we've done a video like this, similar to this one in the past. You can check that out as well. Maybe there's things I forgot today. But I just want to captivate a little bit of uh, the viewers that are watching our channel to understand a little bit when you do jiu-jitsu yourself or maybe your child does. Understand a little bit what's happening when you're looking at a class. Now there's something else I want to cover before we leave is the standing position that will also give you points. So if we stand up, and for example, Alex shoots in on a single leg position, right? Grabs it here, now he picks it up. And now maybe he's gonna just pick it up, treetop over, and now from here, sweep me to the side. If I fall down, he scores two points, right? Doesn't matter the type of takedown. I can shoot a single leg from here, and now just grab him to the side here. As I bring this one over, if I sweep him from here, that is also considered a takedown, right? From the feet, okay? It could be a double leg takedown where I shot in from here, and now as I move in, I cut the corner, Boom, as he lands, even though I land with him, I land in my takedown, I fell into the side control position, and from here, I scored my two points. Now, it might be confusing because now you're thinking, well, I passed the guard. You didn't pass the guard. You actually landed from the takedown position over the legs, and I will only give you two points, not a guard pass, all right? So a lot of people sometimes think, well, I should have three points for passing the guard. It's not so. The guard pass will only occur if you are stuck in your opponent's leg. Leg or legs, right? When I say leg, meaning that this is still considered a guard. If I start in this position, I'm technically in the open guard position. If I start in this position, I'm technically into the closed guard position. And if I started or landed, I should say, in this position, where he has only one leg instead of two, that is the half guard position. Whatever guard position, Think of it like this. Every time my opponent controls me or one of my limbs with his legs, that is a guard position. Now if I can pass that control, now I get my three points for the guard pass. All right, so if you do a takedown and you land it in the half guard, for example, you're gonna get your two points for the takedown. And now, if you were to bring the half guard pass, now you're gonna get another three points for clearing the legs. So that will give you a total of five points, but not if you just land in the side control from the takedown itself, because remember, like I mentioned earlier, you don't get points for side control. You only get points for passing the guard. Now let's take a look at if we are standing position and Alex decides to pull guard. He pulls the guard pull from here, 
And now I start in this position into his open guard. There's no points for this, right? If you pull guard, it's a great tactic for Jiu Jitsu to start the action, but there's no points. I want to talk about something very important. If Alex pulls guard with the wrong foot, and I grab the pass during the guard pull, right? It goes here, boom. Now I end up in this position. Now I scored on the takedown simply because I've touched his leg. All right, so the rules will state that if you guard pull, you have to guard pull and connect. If you guard pull and I connect, I get the points, right? So if he guard pulls, once again, I block, or I sweep him from here, now I'm going to get the points. Plus, I'm gonna stabilize the knee on belly position, and I might even get into the mount. Now, think of it like this. Every time you're in a position, you're always in dominance. That's why the point system works as such, such as the four points for the mount. This is one of the major positions in jiu-jitsu, such as back control. Let's look at these two positions very quickly. Why is it dominant? Number one, if it was a real fight, right? I can punch him, attacking, I have complete control of the situation, as opposed to my opponent who's underneath my legs. For submission attempts in jiu-jitsu, for example, maybe I'm posted here, he tries to trap and roll. Now look, you can easily counter this stuff by attacking the submission holes once again and coming back to arm locks, submission attacks, right? You can get to here, get in your S mount positions. From here, look, you smash on one side, bring it on the opposite side, pass it again. Once you're here, you switch. There's so many tactics. If you had the back control, so from the back control, we know we have the collar choke. So from here, that's why it's four points because every time you're here, the most dominant attacks are gonna happen from these positions where you have complete control on your opponent. So if I have this position here, this is where I have maybe some collar choke positions. From here, look, if I get to here, look, one, trap him, and I have the collar chokes. I can go one arm chokes. So rear naked, which we know from here, rear naked choke could be one. I can go here, trap his arm, and just look, just from here, just, Get that air choke. There's so many attacks we can do from the mouth and the back. You know, from here you can also just dip out and from here pass into an arm bar once again. Many tactics, but this is not a tutorial on how to do techniques. I just wanted to take a basic overview to teach everyone who's watching. Sometimes I get questions on how the point system works, how to get ready for your first class in Jiu Jitsu. Whether you train with me or you train elsewhere, anywhere in the world, guys, I hope this video helped. Leave us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new and we will see you in the next video. Take care.